your business, it just feels so differently than it did two months ago. And it's like everything it feels like it's much clearer. Uh, there's just much less drama. It feels good kind of spiritually, I guess is a good word, like emotionally, to like know that everybody is on the same page of like trying to get a system in place that doesn't drive us insane. Telling Adam I want to stay in Santa Fe for nice. another week. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go home yet. It's so nice here. Stay with Emma for another week while he goes to his offsite. Look at this big, look at this big window. It's wow, cool, huh? that's a nice one right there. This is no a cool one loves house. The architecture. I just love Adobe. Yeah. She posts. Yeah, she's going to be a horseback rider, a little hunter jumper. Well, that makes me nervous. I got her. For falling like back like that. Right, I got her feet. She's not falling. Sweet. I've been, uh, I've been kind of laughing the whole progress of it. That's fucking awesome. So I'm moving offices because, well, the idea of the Jasper office, well, I loved working with those guys because we would kind of shoot the shit or whatever, but like, they stopped coming in. <laughs> I love this idea of living and working on this block that I love so much in Clarksville, in Austin. An office popped up on my street. It's not super nice with the help of John. We're hopefully making it like a dope space and a really cool place to capture a lot of podcast-ish footage to amplify the LinkedIn stuff that we're doing now. It's like really nice to be in the neighborhood. I'm going to put you over there. Just because Uncle Lou can't she, see she, that well the sun right yeah, now. Bonnie loves to just sort of... Yeah, she likes to be in the flow. Yeah. Which I appreciate. That. Sometimes in the wrong spot. But very passionate about it. Yeah, yes. Okay. What does Apollo do? Apollo is a Apollo uh, is a zoom info that's okay. like low. So the the disruption that and this other company Lucia did at the same time too. But this, the disruption that they did when Santos. So I think that I'm in the middle of changing um, the my, the direction of a lot of my founder brand content because we're creating a product for. B2B SaaS companies rather than Shopify stores. And they're all on LinkedIn. They're salespeople that we're selling to and founders and uh, they're doing their jobs on LinkedIn, trying to sell to other people on LinkedIn. Just recently, I seem to have been cracked a code on creating very viral posts. Um, and the initial product reception is very good in the first place. And, um, you know, the D2C founder brand content wasn't really generating leads. It was kind of doing something different than that. Uh, and it appears as though this will, well, it already is. It's directly generating leads from, from for beta testers, just from, from doing it. So um, when you see something like that, and uh, the reason you were doing it in the first place was to help your business, it's hard to not want to spend all the time dedicated um, to that. Somebody said this on some podcast I listened to. They're like, the, 
the good ideas just keep coming back. <laughs> you know, it's like, and then how I have always conceived of products is just by talking to people and gauging the look on their face as you articulate it. Uh huh. And you know, the more people that I explained this product to, and ha you know, who are in my shoes, right? Like had some salespeople or whatever. Yeah. And like explain to them how it was different than the products in the market. They were like, I will buy that. Yeah. <laughs> like in the price, you know? Uh-huh. So that was kind of a first start. And then, positive yeah, and then Diana's like, well, let's just get like- Santos, since, probably since like our first or second conversation, he was like, I know, like I'm telling you, like there's tons of value to this technology in B2B no one's doing identity this way. I was like, well, maybe there's a chance. What I had failed to, to, to realize basically is like for people who have a sales org and they have BDRs, there's actually tremendous value in just handing the leads of people that were on the site, their LinkedIn URL, you know, their phone number or whatever, um, and the pages they were looking at to the sales work every day because I mean, it's obvious why like they're, they're better leads than the leads they're dealing with than buying them from zoom info or Apollo or whoever. We kind of just plan to price it in a way to where it's like an absolute no brainer, like 500 bucks a month or something. You know, I've been trying to like hone in my LinkedIn game just because, or my founder brand game in general. Right. Um, just because I, I had this feeling that I wasn't really doing it the right way. And this coach I'm working with is fantastic. And I was explaining to him the product. And he's like, man, if you have something that you're selling to salespeople, like LinkedIn will be unbelievably effective. So it's like, all right, I'm gonna just start screwing around with LinkedIn content for salespeople and see what happens. And I created these like three incredibly viral posts, three posts in a row in a week. So it was like, okay, the top of funnel for this is incredibly encouraging. Yeah, that's really nice. So, you know, that's basically like, it's just amazing for a lot of reasons. I like to start with the gong and then play the bowls and then I finish with these guys. These Koshi chimes that are like the sweetest things. Then I got these bowls, these Tibetan bowls. And these are a lot more, a lot more, it just takes like a lot more to get them to like sing. And they all go to a different chakra system. So, I mean, this one is for the solar plexus. And then these are, this one is the heart, the third eye, and sacral. And I'm just setting up now because we have a sound healer who's, she's like a sound alchemist coming to the house to give us all sound healing um, sessions. And she wants to use my stuff, so. I learned a lot from sort of distancing myself from core principles that I know are meaningful to me, but like also it's so fortunate to be, to have stumbled upon this at this position, you know, with like the revenue and now the profitability that we have and the brand recognition and the skill set of this founder brand. We're gonna get back to being very profitable and uh, you know, hopefully I think the goal of 2 million MRR by my 43rd birthday, which is November 10th, is um, what we're trying to do.